Sunday mornings at Columbine, we still gather as a community to learn and connect. Each week we have adult education at 930, which you can find Zoom links in our e-blast. And the list of topics are published each week in the e-blast. And we also have coffee time, which is a way to just connect with your cup of coffee on Zoom at 1030. So feel free to join us in either place if you're craving community and wanting to learn. Wanting to find out more about how you can get connected or learn more about events at Columbine? Here's two places you can get connected. First, check out our new website um, uh, and explore the different things available on the website from blogs, the e-blast, and links to our Sunday videos. Also, if you are not on our e-blast email list, make sure that you get signed up for that. You can email us at cuc at columbineunitedchurch.org um, and we will get you on the list to make sure that you are receiving our weekly communication of the e-blast and our monthly Columbine United newsletter. Thank you to all of you who have turned in your commitment cards to supporting Columbine in the year 2021. We are starting to put together a budget for the next year, and we have a great vision for funding not only um, our staff, but many ministries as we look forward to what the next year brings. But we need your support and commitment. And so if you have not yet turned in a commitment card and plan to give in the next year, we encourage you to do so. You can do that online under the Give tab at on our website, or you can always email us or send in a commitment card in the mail. Thank you for your response as it helps us faithfully plan for the future. Columbine and welcome to our online worship this week. We send our love and care to you wherever you are in your day and week. So I can say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening because those probably all apply. But thanks for being here with us today as we gather online as a community continuing in this season. You know, we have done one online live Zoom service, and we've been thinking it was it was really fun. We got great feedback from that, that you all loved seeing each other's faces. And so we are planning another one that will be at 1030 in the morning on Sunday, February 7th. Following that, at 1130, we are going to do a congregational conversation. There is so much going on, um, not only around COVID and gathering restrictions and healthy choices, but also um, around our budgeting year, around the capital campaign and the building renovation continuing to move forward. And so we want to just take some time online to connect with Columbine community, answer questions, give updates, share pictures, all that kind of stuff. And so write those date or write that date on your calendar of February 7th. We also plan to do a building walkthrough um, with limited groups over time for those um, who would like to see the progress or the torn apart building on Saturday, February 7th. And so what's a couple of fun things I think it's also a Super Bowl weekend. A couple of fun things to look forward to in the future of our community. We thank you in this past week for all of you who showed up and um, contributed to loving the community in different ways of service on Martin Luther King Day. We also thank you for how you all continue to give and support not only the community, not only your neighbors, but also the Columbine United community staff and our mission partners through your faithful giving month by month um, you keep us going so that we can continue to not only connect in worship but also um, serve love and share with our mission partners as well in our community so thank you for all you do just a reminder if you have not turned in a commitment to giving in 2021 
finance council is moving forward with shaping a vision budget of what we plan to do and hope to do. And all of that requires a foundation of funding. So our dreams have to be funded to move forward. And so we encourage you to please um, reach out and to make that or communicate that commitment if you haven't yet. And so today, I want to encourage us to just gather, gosh, what a week, what a month it has been already as we have just dived into 2021. And so let us take a moment, as we so often do, and take a deep breath. Be still. Be aware of the presence of the divine around you and with you. Let me read some words from Psalm 30 as our opening and then an opening prayer. I wait for you, O God, my soul waits. And in your word, I hope. My soul waits for you, O God, more than those who wait for the morning, more than those who wait for the morning. Would you take a moment now um, as I read our opening prayer to just sit and rest. You don't even have to read it along with me. Just listen to the words of my voice as it is our call to worship, as it is our opening prayer today. I watch this morning for the light that the darkness has not overcome. I watch for the fire that was in the beginning, that burns still in the brilliance of the rising sun. I watch for the glow of life that gleams in the growing earth and glistens in the sea and sky. I watch for your light, O God, in the eyes of every living creature and in the ever-living flame of my own soul. If the grace of seeing were mine this day, I would glimpse you in all that lives. Grant me the grace of seeing this day. Grant me the grace of seeing this day. Amen. Our opening song this day is Come Thou Fount. It's a great old and beloved hymn. Um, And one of the lines is, Take my heart, Lord, hear and seal it. Seal it for your courts above. It's all about being alive. Alive in the divine. Of showing up of being wholehearted in our worship. And that is our goal, that is our hope, that is our desire in this day.
to be back with all of you. It was so good to be home for the holidays, but now it's time to get back to work. You may not know this, but for the past two years, I've been working on my degree from Harvard. Today you are at my graduation. I will be the youngest dog ever to get their dog Toriant. After looking back at my schooling, I can think of all the teachers who had a major impact on my life. There's the one who taught me how to sit and stay. The nice teacher who would sneak us treats. But there is one teacher who taught me some of the most important things about life. Jesus. He taught me all about loving my neighbor, how to pray and worship, and all about how we are all loved in the eyes of God. Jesus taught me through parables, signs and wonders, stories, and by the way he lived his life. The great part is that we can read about all these teachings from the Bible. I wonder who has been a great teacher in your life. Maybe it was a school teacher, a parent or a grandparent, a pastor, or maybe a friend. What makes that teacher so wonderful to you? I hope you get to think about this with your family. Well, now that graduation is done, I have a new adventure to go on. Can you guess where I will be next week? Here are your clues. One, this place borders the U.S. and Canada. Two, over 12 million people visit this place each year. Three, it is home to three beautiful waterfalls. All right, kids, that's all for now. See you next week. Oh, where in the world is Indiana Bronson? Thank you, Samantha. And so great to see Indy again at Harvard, nonetheless. So thank you. We continue today in our journey through the Bible. We're in the early Gospels. And um, today's theme is Jesus as a teacher. And we look at a story from Mark chapter 4 on the parables. So I'm going to be reading um, Jesus sharing and then explaining a parable from Mark 4, verse 1 through 20. So here is our scripture for today. And then we get to hear Steve as he unpacks the scripture for us. The parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. And such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into the boat on the sea and sat there. While the crowd was beside the sea on the land, he began to teach them things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell on a path and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. When the sun arose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it, yield no gra- it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and hundredfold. And Jesus said, Let anyone with ears hear, listen. Later, when he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables. In order that, this is quoting scripture, they may indeed look, but not perceive. They may indeed listen, but not understand so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, 
Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? Here it is. The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. They hear Satan, and they, when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown to them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And the others are those sown sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come and choke out the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown in good soil. They hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. Here ends our reading for today. And here's Steve. Thank you, Jill, for that great scripture passage. I love the story of the parable of the sower and the soils. So something different, I'm down in my basement office. I'm sitting here at my desk. I've got my computer screen. I want to do a keynote today. I'm going to kind of uh, see how this works, doing something new. I always like to change things up. You might hear my dog barking in the next room. It's kind of funny. Outside you've got noises. Inside you've got noises. But something different. Let's kind of go. So I have a question for you. Have you got your burpee seed catalog yet in the mail? It's that time of year where burpee sends out its seed catalog. You know, I was with a group of people last week at the coffee fellowship time. A group of us gets together every Sunday morning after the adult education hour. And they were talking about gardening. We just kind of talk about life, what's going on. They started talking about gardening. And these people are passionate about their gardening. Let me tell you, they... They start seeds in little seed pots down in their basement. They have grow lights. They nurture these seeds along. They transplant them into bigger and bigger pots until they're ready to be planted in late spring, early summer. And I mean to tell you, I was really impressed by how passionate these people are about their gardening. And if you ask them what makes for a good garden, they will tell you soil. It starts with healthy seed, good soil, necessary light, and water and moisture. Those are the elements that goes into making a healthy garden, but it always starts with good soil. You have to have good soil. That's what I love about the story about the parable of the sower and the soils, this parable that Jesus teaches, because it helps us understand that we need to become good soil and understand to and able to receive the seed that God wants to plant inside of us. You know, hopefully you've been reading the book, We Make the Road by Walking with Brian McLaren. Not a good picture on the screen, but you can see it here on the, in my hand. We Make the Road by Walking, a great book. We've been reading this book now uh, since uh, early September. And now we're going to read it all the way through August. We're on chapter 22. And in this chapter, McLaren talks about the fact that uh, Jesus was a great teacher, a wonderful teacher. And one of the ways that he taught was by telling parables, these little stories about what it meant to be in a relationship with God, what it meant to be in a relationship with Jesus, how do we lift up Jesus' teachings. And so he tells the story of the parable of the sower and the soils. It's not a complicated parable. It's actually pretty simple. He says, you know, a sower goes out to sow some seeds. It's kind of like a Johnny Apple seed sower. He's just kind of casting seeds, not worrying about where they go. Casting seeds, but the seeds fall on different soil. Some of the seeds fall on upon a hard pan path. Nothing there, big solid. And Satan comes and snatches the seed away. Other seed fills, uh, falls on rocky soil. It receives the seed with joy and begins to grow, but because it lacks any depth, the plant begins to wither and die away. Some seed falls on weedy soil. The plant begins to grow, but because Jesus says the cares of the world and wealth, the seed begins to choke off. The plant begins to choke off and doesn't grow. Other seed falls on good soil, and it nurtures the seed, and the seed grows into a plant that yields 30, 60, and 100-fold. And then Jesus says, the one who has ears to hear, let them hear. You know, it's Jesus' way of saying, go figure it out. 
Well, after he tells the soul, uh, tells the parable, the disciples are pretty confused. They can't figure out what this what the parable means. And I think you know Jesus probably is so exasperated with these guys because they they can never figure it out. In fact, one of my favorite stories is when Jesus says to the disciples, "Are you being?" willfully stupid are you being willfully stupid don't you get these things and so jesus unpacks the parable and as he unpacks the parable that we can unpack it as well for our lives you know when i think about uh, this parable and understanding there's uh, there's two words that you have to have two thoughts you need to have you need to think about what's your word and what kind of soil are you What's your word and what kind of soil are you let's talk about what's your word you know jesus talks about the seed as being a word and how he interprets the parable to the disciples he says the seed is the word and the word is planted into you so what's the word you know i have my uh my anchor bible dictionary it's up there on my shelf i look how thick this is this is a dictionary of all the different words in the bible uh six volumes of dense literature about all the words and think about the um the oed the oxford english dictionary a 20 volume dictionary about all the words in the english language all these different words that are being spoken i want you to think about out of all these different words what is the word that god wants to speak to you what is the word that God wants to plant deep inside of your being? Think about that word, that seed that's being planted. What do you need to hear from God? You know, maybe you need to hear that Jesus is the word made flesh from John's gospel, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Maybe you need to hear that basic message. But maybe you need to hear something else. Maybe you need to hear that you are a good, a precious, a beautiful child of God, and you are loved. Maybe you need to hear God say, you are on the right path. Maybe you need to hear God say, get a life. Get on a different path. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing this week, I know that you know what the word is that God wants to speak to you. And I want you to have the ears to hear so that you can allow that to dive deep into your being. And you know, the cool thing about the sower is that God is going to keep on sowing these seeds until you get it, until you understand it, until you embody it. The seed, the word is just going to keep on coming to you. So you better get with the program and become good soil. Because then Jesus says, what kind of soil are you? I think that's the powerful thing about this parable. He asks the story, what's your word? Then you need to ask yourself the question, well, what kind of soil am I? Because he talks about these different kind of soils. You know, he says, first of all, there's the hard pan soil, the soil that on the path, that there's nothing there. It's hard pan. It's baked dry and satan comes and takes it away you know i think about people who stormed the capitol a couple weeks ago those people are being are like hard pan soil i mean there's just nothing there and satan came and swept them away the powers of darkness and evil came and swept those people away you know he's it's really, do you really want to be that kind of soil? I mean, I don't want you to be that kind of soil. I want you to have some kind of depth about you. And that's what Jesus says. He says, you know, the next seed falls on some rocky soil, and it begins to grow. It receives the word with joy, but because it lacks any depth, the seed begins to wither and die away. So I want you to think about, are you rocky soil? Do you lack the depth that is needed to help your seed, help your word grow? Do you receive with excitement the word that God has to speak to you? But then because you just like, you don't want to spend the time. You just kind of dance. You just don't want to care about it. The, wither, the seed wither and falls away. You know, if you want to be that kind of soil, again, you know, Jesus wants to say to you, change. We don't want you to be rocky soil. And Jesus says some seed falls on weedy soil and this is uh, the seed that grows but is choked off by the cares of the world it's like you know think about this you have your mortgage you have your car insurance you have your car payment and you're saving for the kids college you uh, you're worried about your job worrying about your kids worrying about everything that's going on in the politics in our nation i mean it just kind of goes on and on and on and on and these things begin to choke that word that seed that's planted inside of you and if you're kind of a weed weedy soil god would say to you jesus would say to you it's time to weed that soil it's time to get that stuff out of you it's to allow that word to sit and sink 
inside of you. Or Jesus says, some of the seed falls on good soil and it bears a crop 30, 60, 100 fold. Are you good soil? Is there something deep and rich about you that is bearing wonderful fruit in your life? You know, I think that's the goal. I think the goal is that we all, Jesus is wanting us to see that we all want to be good soil, that we should all desire to be good soil. And what does it take to become good soil? I mean, you know, I think if you went back to the gardeners, we would, they would say, you have to be intentional about it. You have to work at creating good soil. If we want to be good soil, you have to, you know, turn the soil over. You have to work it. You have to work fertilizer into it. It needs water. It needs air. It needs fresh air. It needs to be worked. You have to be intentional about it. If you want to be good soil, you know what? You've got to start working in your life. And, you know, how do you do that? I mean, some of it is obvious. You know what it is you need to do. You need to eat right. You need to sleep right. You need to get exercise. You need to have meaning. You need to have a passion about your life. Like these gardeners, they were passionate. You know what? Maybe you can be passionate as well about your life. That's what it starts turning over your soil and getting things ready to do. I mean, you need to take care of yourself. Now, I know that if you're a parent with little kids, it is really hard to take care of yourself. I mean, your exercise is sometimes just chasing the kid around all day long. When the kid takes a nap, you're exhausted to do anything. But you know what? I think if you have little kids, it's so important that you find time to take care of yourself. If you have a spouse or a partner, that you need to make sure you're covering each other's back so each other, so each of you have a time to take care of yourself. If you know someone who's a single person, parent, then we need to uh, step around behind them and get get on their team so that they can have a break so we can watch the kids so that they can take care of themselves. Parents, you got to take care of yourself. If you don't have little kids, I got to tell you, you have no excuse. It's time for you to get off the couch. Get off the couch Get on with your life. You have plenty of time. You have plenty of time to fill your life with meaning and hope and identity. You need to get some exercise. You need to every single day do something to fill and satisfy your body, to get your blood pumping and your heart going, you know, to just to exert yourself, to feel good about your body, you know, and what are you doing to, to take care of your soul? You know, I think sometimes our calendars, our evenings are filled with Hulu and Netflix. You know, I get it. I get it. Everybody needs a little bit of brain candy in the middle of their lives. I watch, Phoebe and I like watching Netflix in the evenings ourselves, but also there's so much more. I mean, just think about this. There's books, fiction, nonfiction. I mean, there's magazine. There are new shows. There are actually on Netflix and uh, and Hulu. There are amazing shows and documentaries that you could be watching that you could be soaking up. There's engineering architecture, accounting. I mean, I love the fact that accountants can become so passionate about their work. So many different ways to fill your heart with good things, to fill your soul with good things. You know, hopefully you're taking care of your spiritual soul. You know, you're reading the Bible, you're praying, you're reading uh, devotional authors like Brian McLaren. There's a host of others. Ask Jill and I, and we we can give you a host of other authors that you can be reading. But you can take care of your soul soul because when you take care of your soul you become good soil you become healthy soil because you know what everybody loves a joyful garden and when you step inside a garden that's full with flowers it just makes you smile it's so beautiful when you step inside a vegetable garden you see all this food that's being grown and those straight beautiful rows i mean it's like it's beautiful it makes you feel a sense of joy That's what happens when you become healthy soil. You become filled with joy. Like a community garden brings so much joy to the community. You bring joy to the community when that word sets deep inside of you and you become good soil and allow that word to grow. You know, I want you to think about growth. I want you to think about when you were a kid. And people hadn't seen you for a while, and all of a sudden they saw you again. What did they say? They would say, my, how you've grown. My, how you've grown. Well, you know what? I think when we become good soil and healthy soil, 
and joyful soil, people look at us and marvel and say, my, how you've grown, how you've grown. What is the word that you need to hear? What kind of soil are you? I know it's the dead of winter, but it's time to start thinking about spring planting. Take care. Let's hear a beautiful prayer. Thank you, Steve, for that wonderful sermon. And now if you'll join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to gather online. Lord, today we remember the soil. We remember how we come from the soil. We come from the dust. And we remember how in the dust, in the soil, we also find new life. I pray that you help us to sow wonderful seeds and that you guide us in our walks with you. Lord, I also pray for our country in this time of transition. I pray that even in the chaos, we find peace. I pray that even in these difficult transitions, that you are with us. And Lord, we pray for justice as well. We know that you are with us and guiding us through whatever comes. Lord, we just pray that you remain with each of us and with each of our country's leaders in this time. As we think about the soil and as we think about where we come from, we know that we come from a tradition of praying this prayer to you, Lord, just as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And now as we transition into a time of worship, I want us to remember that our God is a great teacher, the master rabbi who teaches us gracious self-giving on behalf of our enemies. Growth through weakness rather than conquest, reconciliation rather than humiliation and intimidation, and a willingness to suffer rather than to inflict suffering. As the hymn title states, our God is immortal and visible, and the only one with eternal wisdom. As we close our worship, let's meditate on this great hymn as Lynn and Joe present us with an instrumental version. Throughout this piece, selected lyrics from the hymn will be presented on the screen to aid your meditation. Here it is now.
So our video has now come to an end. You've heard prayers, you've heard beautiful music, a children's time, a scripture passage, a sermon. And now my question for you is, how are you going to take this? How are you going to incorporate it into your life? Just don't turn the video off and go and do something else. I want you to think about what this message means to you. What is the word that God wants you to hear today? What kind of soil are you? Are you receptive to the word that God wants to speak to you? I hope that you watch this video more than once. Maybe sometime during the week you'll cycle back to it and re-watch re and rethink what this message means. What kind of word? What kind of soil? May God bless you and keep you, shape you and mold you, love you and hold you. Let's stay forth now and forevermore. Amen.